earlier now. He is best remembered as Kenya's professor of politics. Retired President Daniel Arap Moy was Kenya's second president who steered the country through perhaps the most turbulent political moments and nonetheless remained afloat until December 2002 when he peacefully handed over power to his successor from the then opposition. So what are some secrets or political cards he wielded and perhaps displayed? Asante. His name is President Daniel Toroitich Arap Moy, now retired. He is a man who took over the reins of power in unexpected moments when Kenya was only 15 years old as a republic following the sudden death of the nation's founding father, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Mimi, Daniel Toroitich Arap Moy, Naba kwamba nitakuwa maminifu kwa jamuhuri ya Kenya na kuitumikia kwa moyo wangu wote na kwamba nitaifadhi nitalinda na kuitetea katiba ya Kenya kwa mujibu wa sheria iliyowekwa and would go on and lead the country for 24 years nearly a quarter a century current Garissa senator Mohamed Yusuf Haji served as Rift Valley Provincial Commission and then for two separate terms, a combined period of 11 years. Rift Valley was President Moy's home province. And what I learned from Mr. Moy is that he's man of his word. He's very cautious about the welfare of Kenyans. People can say all sorts of things. Former Deputy Prime Minister and now ANC Party leader Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi joined President Moy's cabinet at the age of 28 and a half years and would later rise to serve as his last vice president. So what do I think of Moy? This was a very resilient individual. A lot of uh, major challenges came into his, his, his tenure. Um, and uh, he was able to overcome uh, those challenges, of course at a cost in certain instances, but whether we like it or not, let us at least appreciate that this is an individual who held the country for 24 years, but he still maintained a unified nation. The internal dynamics aside, they both remember retired president as a leader who spent long and odd hours in office and also a stickler to timekeeping. So is go to boss Francis Atwoli, a Kanu party life member. Well, the president was concerned with everything that happens in the country. Uh, he can call you anytime and you can call him anytime. I remember occasionally calling him at 2 a.m. So one of the things that uh, the Moy government uh, <laughs> succeeded in doing is that even for the younger people or for those who would once in a while want to have their drink, uh, those surprise calls and uh, uh, surprise summons um, kept some measure of discipline. So the people, because he was a teetotaler, <laughs> kept some measure of discipline that you have to be at your best because you do not know when this uh, Mze is going to summon you, and what will it be for? Uh, Moi was, uh, he played the way Joe Kadenge used to play football as number nine, for those people who didn't see him. So Moi was a, 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 a dribbler, a person who could get out of any problem at any time. <laughs> Having served as his backyard regional commissioner, Haji, who says three quarters of his life has been in public service, had mastered two or three things about Mze. I will not stand uh, in any presidential function and repeat the brief that I have given him. Because that, that, that would be, that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are preempting whatever he was going to talk. So I used to make a very short speech. While Mdavadi remembers this day when he met Mze Moi in his true colors, it was in mid-90s when the country was in a financial crisis. Britain Wood Institutions, the IMF and World Bank had withdrawn funding.
Mdavadia's finance minister and his then permanent secretary Benjamin Kipkulei were summoned to State House for a crisis meeting where they found a furious host waiting for them in a corridor. He was restless and very agitated on this occasion. My then PS, uh, Benjamin Kipkulei, uh, went out to greet him and then he spoke in Kikalenjin and he said, Jamugevo yo, and then tried to extend the hand to Moi. The man was livid. He said, Kwende ukuna yo jamugevo yo yako. Mimi ni miwangoja. Nataka ni jue nini kinaendelea. Ingeni kwa ofisi maramboja tuzungumuzi. Wachana na yo mambo ya jamugevo yo. Now, this was uh, Moi. The same Ze Moi had the country's interest at heart and meant well for the nation, a matter that is subject to political debate. I attended the meeting that removed Section 2A uh, uh, at Kasarani, and uh, all of us, we, we, we were saying we don't want that uh, part of the Constitution to be removed to introduce multi-party democracy. But, uh, you know, after people had talked, everybody had talked, uh, the old man stood up and he said, I understand international politics and I don't want my people to die, but let us allow this, but we will play our own politics to make sure that the Kano remains in power. Then there is this untold story, how he arrived at Uhuru Park grounds alone on December 30th, 2002, to hand over power to his successor, Mwai Kibaki. Moi was alone and braved the charged NAC supporters who nearly made the swearing-in ceremony difficult. We asked him, should we come with you to Handover? And I think the intelligence had told him that people are so charged, uh, there's, there's a complete uh, lack of order at Uhuru Park. Moi then said he would rather go alone. Um, he was not treated very well, to be honest. Uh, people threw mud at him. Uh, objects were being hurled at him. Insults. But the fact that he went there and handed over speaks volumes about this individual. That when you've gone through a democratic process, and the people have made a decision, you must hand over. To me, uh, that is a tribute um, that we must never forget. When he took over as the country's second president, many perceived him as a passing cloud, but he went on to lead the country for 24 years, a record that will never be achieved by any other person in Kenya after the dynamics of leadership changed. Perhaps how he remained afloat confirms why they called him as the professor of Kenyan politics. The story of Daniel Teroitich, Arab Moy. My name is Duncan Hemba. This is KTN News.